Kirungi te reo karanga o tu tātou mineta te nā koe. Nga nai wakare wā tūrā tēnei kaupapa o tianō rā kautau ngā ringa ringa ngā wai wai kairo te ngā hapori. Hara mai, ki te wakare wā tango te te kaupapa i mūti aro aro o tātou. Kaore e te kūmi aro o tianō rā, a tēnei te iwi kainga, te atiawa, tarana ki whānui, ngā titō i wakatau kia kautau katoa, kai ngā mātawaka, kai ākunui, kai ākurahi. Kai o kūranga tira, nau mai te nā koutou, te nā koutou. Me ki i ki runge e te kaupapa o tētehi, tētehi tangata e waka ia tūrā tēnei waiata, i wainga i te raruraru i wangi ngā pōpā kaitore me tērā kaunihera. Ara ko tō nengua rā, ko te ana tipa haimona tērā, Morvan Simons, me ona waiata pēneina. Te aroha, te whakapono, me te rangi mari e tātou tātou e. I tuā tūwai te kāwi maunga ki rungo pā kaitore, a te riri i wainga ki a rātau i te kaunihira. I haere rātau ki te hui ki te kiritahi, ki rungi te marae, ki rungi te marae o tōna marae. E rua ngā kuaha. E uru to mātu rā te kaunihira ki tētehi kua, a e uru to mātu rā ngā iwi Māori ki roto i tētehi atu kua. O te anō rā e ware kotahi. I te mutunga tērā hui i tūia ki te waka ia tūrā tēnei waiata i rungi te kaupapa o te aroha, i rungi te kaupapa o te whakapono me te rangi Māori e mahi ngā tahi tātou. O reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to your MC. I mean, you've seen his face on TV, you've seen his face in nearly every corner of your, of your home um, and heard him on radio. He's an amazing, amazing person. And uh, uh, I didn't actually want to follow him because uh, he'd steal all my thunder. No reira, kai o kutua kan. Brent, no my heart away. Tēnā koe. A tēnā koe te rangatira nā mihi nuki a koe tō whakatau me te mana whenua hoki. Tēnā koe tau katoa. Tūatahi, I'd just like to say, first and foremost, apparently a camera puts 10 pounds on you and I can see 19 cameras here today, so that's why I look the way I do. On that, nā mihi nuki a koe tau te haramai tēnei rā whakahirihira. Welcome to all. Everyone that is here and uh, Namihi Kia Mike uh, for our waiata before we started because as I seen everyone walk into the doors, everyone was quite formal, everyone was quite, whew, it's a launch. Whew. As soon as the waiata, everyone felt like that they were home. I seen a couple of ladies just flick their hair and all that sort of stuff and now we're all relaxed. It's a brilliant, beautiful day and to all the participants, uh, participants that have arrived here today, Namihi Nui Kia Koutou. Um, we've got mamas, papas, groa, we've got nannies here and it is the first week of our school holidays and we've got our babies at home and we are missing our babies dearly and we are here and we are thinking of you so thank you Namihi Nui Kia Koutou for doing that. I have five babies myself um, and I've got three of our youngest ones at home and they, um, we were saying that me and mum were going to Mahi and we're going to be in Wellington for the, for the entire week and they moaned, our little baby boy, he's nine years old. He walks around like he pays the mortgage. Ne? You know, he doesn't, Wi-Fi is just a thing that's meant to be there. And he's, he's moaning up a storm, our little baby, and all that sort of stuff. So I had to give him an ancient proverb, which came from my iwi in Te Nā Maihi, uh, which uh, predates the waka migration here, an ancient proverb, whakatauki, as I might say. And it goes a little something like this. If you want to eat, boy, mama and dad got to go to Mahi. So... He picked up his lips and he carried on. But to all those who have ch who are children at home, um, thank you very much. We are here because of the launch of the Family Violence Prevention Frameworks of our three streams, which is Etu Fano, Pacifica Proud, and the Campaign for Action on Family Violence, um, most commonly known as It's Not OK. Now, this is an um, auspicious occasion, and I'd like to um, acknowledge all the people that are here today. And there's a lot to mention, and I'd like to say there are some special people here. There are some important people here. There are some specially important people here. And they all come under the banner of Fano, And that's why we're here. And thank you for your passion within this kaupapa or family violence. 
Now, under the um, COVID, we saw resilience within our communities. We saw whānau coming together. We've, we saw whānau helping whānau who haven't spoken to each other for many, many months, many, many years. We saw people who were fishing for kikui and kaumatua. In my community, firewood was getting dropped off. It was getting cold. It was all these things were happening right throughout the country. And I do hope that that type of aroha continues throughout Aotearoa, not just in our Māori communities, in our community of Aotearoa. And I think the whakaaro of, of everyone here today um, brings that and will continue to send that through and back into your own hapu, whānau and communities. So thank you once again for being here. I'd like to say under the uh, he kapua uh, pauri or, or māwiwi or COVID, um, there was a couple of things that I'd like to bring up around the COVID-19. And the fear of, of, of this virus is still going on globally and the impact is being felt far and wide. I'd just like to say during the level four lockdown, everything was closed. Everything was closed. Clay shops. Now in particular, in my, and I'm speaking from my own perspective, KFC was closed. McDonald's was closed. Pizza Hut was closed. I do not know why I put on eight kilos in four weeks. <laughs> Please explain any dietitians in the house. No? Thank you. They're not the problem. All right? I do take the skin off my KFC to eat it last, so don't worry about that. I'm taking the healthy option. And I do say that coleslaw is a salad. Thank you very much. Hoi on te we will carry on as I can see that people are going, time, it's time, it's time. Now, within our, um, our day today, we are going to be launching um, the, the Family Violence Prevention Frameworks, and we're going to hear from some um, speakers here today. Um, I'd just like to make mention as well that all our communities, I can see all our different communities here, um, here today, and I do hope that after today that we can take away something and we can actually hear from some people and get what they would say from the horse's mouth and some trust and some honour in what we are all here to do and see within our communities. Ka pai? Ka pai. All right. So, our first speaker I'd like to introduce, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when I um, met this wonderful lady today, she turned around and says, Are you funny? I said, well, I look funny, <laughs> but I've got a few more jokes that we'll carry on a little later on. Um, she started as a cadet in what was then the Department of Social Welfare in Whangarei, a small community where she still has strong links to in Whangarei and to the region. She has held a wide range of roles in the ministry and spent time in minister's office as well as appeared in the UK working for the Department of Work and Pensions. Now, she's a person who wants things to make a difference for individuals and in communities as well. She strongly believes it is MSD's role to support communities to make things happen both socially and economically. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite to the podium the CEO of MSD, the very beautiful and lovely Debbie Power. Well, that's a bit of a hard act to follow. Um, Kia ora koutou and warm Pacific greetings and welcome to everybody here. Kura as always, thank you for your warm welcome um, and Brent, thank you for your emceeing today. Note to self, if you just wear a baggy thing, you know, it disappears. That was baggy. <laughs> hey listen, those lights are very bright. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today to take part in launching a body of work that highlights MSD's work with communities on family violence prevention. And these three strategies um, and approaches have been around in our organisation for nearly, well I'd say snap 10 years each, but you know, one's 10, one's 9, one's coming up 11, so let's call it an even 10 and say that these pieces of work and bodies of work have been around. You all know these pieces of work and today we're taking them just that step further. Um, I'd like to acknowledge um, Minister Williams, who is here and will speak to us soon. As it, um, she's here in her Associate Minister for Social Development role and responsible for this portfolio. Um, I'd like to acknowledge MSD's Chief Science Advisor, Tracy McIntosh, who will also be speaking. And I'd like to also thank and welcome Under Secretary Jan Logie, who is... Um, who leads the government's joined up work on family violence and is an absolute passionate advocate for this work. I've seen and heard that firsthand. And look, I know all of you that are here have contributed in some way. I came down last night on the plane from Auckland and you know, half of the people from the far north who were, we, th we thought we should have had it in Auckland, to be honest. There were that many people coming down, but I'm really, really pleased to see um, everybody who made that effort to be here today. 
Um, a special mention of our Race Relations Commissioner who is here and our Disability Commissioner who I saw earlier, Paula, you here somewhere as well. Um, and colleagues from across other agencies who have all worked with us and will continue to work with us. These three strategies represent a very important part of MSD's work. You know, we're well known, I think, in the community for a lot of the work we do through work and income, through a lot of the work that we do to provide services and support to families, but probably less known for the work that we do within and alongside communities. And these initiatives, um, Etu Fano, Pacifica Proud and Campaign for Action, are pivotal to this work from my perspective. And as I said, they build on the existing work in this area. And they make a valuable contribution to MSD's priority to partner with communities and work differently. And, you know, that's a really important part of where we need to take the Ministry of Social Development, which is to work within and alongside our communities. Some of you may know that we at MSD have a strategic framework, and it's called Te Pai Tawhiti. And it sets out MSD's purpose to help New Zealanders be safe, strong and independent. And it signals three organisational shifts that I think we need to make. Mana manaki, to build and uphold the mana and dignity of those we work with. Kotahitanga, partnering for greater impact and acknowledging that we are much stronger than we work when we work with others. And kia takatu tato, which is effectively preparing for the future and taking a longer term view. These frameworks that we're launching today, in my view, exemplify these shifts. As a country, um, Brent said, we've all been through the last months of COVID and lockdown. We've all put on the eight kilos that he's talked about. But look, as an organisation, MSD learnt a lot over this time. You know, we had to change a lot. We had to operate at pace. And we had to make sure that we met the needs of our communities and kept our services operating when our sites were closed too. What we've learned has made us realise that we have to change some of our priorities over the next 12 months to meet the increase in demand that we are both seeing now and expect to continue to see for the short term. But what hasn't changed is one of our key five priorities, and that is partnering with others. These frameworks share an approach focused on putting whānau and community at the centre of the response understanding that transformational change takes collective action, supporting and planning for the long-term change of positive futures and strong, resilient families who can um, come out of the COVID impact in a better shape than potentially they went in. And Brent talked about me and my passion for making a difference in communities. And Actually, that's where the difference is made. It's not made in Wellington. It's not made by me as a chief executive. I can't do any of that. It happens through relationships. It happens through trust. It happens through working together and actually having a core common um, purpose in mind. And that's what you all do. And that's the work that you do on a daily basis. And from my perspective, my organisation needs to enable that to occur more and more. New Zealand has a serious family violence problem, and we've all heard the alarming statistics. I've got a page of them here. I don't think for today that I need to read them out. We know that we have a problem, and we know who is disproportionately affected by that issue. And we know that it has profound and heartbreaking impacts on our children, and since I'm a grandmother, our grandchildren, and on the health and well-being of all of us. And I think we need to remember that none of us are immune to the impacts of this issue. None of us. We need to change the underlying complex factors that drive this problem, and we need to try and innovate, and that's what these strategic frameworks are about. We do a lot of work in the crisis end in terms of family violence. What we need to do is more work in the prevention end. And we know that we spend, I think Marama was telling me in the car, um, out here, we spend $1 on prevention and $6 on crisis. We need to shift that, because the only way we're going to get ahead of this issue is to prevent it in the first place. And everybody, and you all know that that is true. The community-led prevention work is part of a bigger picture from my point of view, 
and it needs to make and it will make an important contribution to the cross government joint venture which is working across the whole sector and aiming to do this it's hard when you start to try and join stuff up it's harder than you might think but you know I always say if a problem is worth solving it's worth struggling with and we need to keep doing that and we need to keep growing our approach to that and our effort and we know that a successful prevention approach will take time yeah and you know everybody's impatient for that but we know that it will take time and it requires different approaches and innovation at the individual family community government and society levels but it will be beneficial and it is the right thing to do they offer real promise these approaches I think and they also show that not only have we already been in this for the long haul, but we will continue to be in it for the long haul. And I look forward to thinking about how we might develop different sorts of partnerships and different approaches and therefore different solutions to how we might tackle um, these issues and make a real positive difference for New Zealand families. Before I conclude, I want to thank all of you from being here today. Minister Williams and I were talking out there and it was really interesting. Yes, you're right, Brent, people were arriving and very formal. I got told I had to dress up today, so that's all good. Um, but once people were in the door, you could see the warmth of the relationships that already exist amongst all of you here today. You know, you already have those relationships. And I always say, when you have relationships and you trust one another, you can actually get so much further than you can when, when that doesn't exist. And it's clear today that that does exist. I'd also like to acknowledge my fantastic team at MSD. Um, it shouldn't really be me up here speaking, it should be Marama and her team because they've done all the hard mahi and the hard graft and they're the ones who work the most closely with you but I am very proud of them. Um, and I'd like to thank all of you for the work that you do every day in communities on really tough, gnarly issues and the fact that you keep coming back and you keep continuing because as I said, these problems are difficult but boy they're worth pursuing with. So. Thank you very much for being here today. I've talked long enough and I look forward to um, chatting to you after this launch is finished. Kia ora. Tēnā koe, Debbie, thank you very much for that. And I'd just like to say from my point of view and seeing the uh, reaction from MSD and your team uh, within the communities at the coalface um, was very, very good. Nā mihi nui kia koe, me tō kaimahi. Kia ora. As we continue, ladies and gentlemen, um, here today in the launch of our Family Violence Prevention Frameworks, um, we're now going to hear from another speaker. And um, ladies and gentlemen, please feel free. I, I've just got to say this. After your corridor, I, I had to hold back my media prowess and start doing the John Campbell talk. So, so, so Debbie, what were you sort of saying? Uh, and now start asking questions. I know this is not the time to do that, but I know we're going to have a mingle around um, after, the, after the launch and we can ask those John Campbell questions um, and get those, so you know... No, no, not John Campbell. No, no, no. Um, I, I meant uh, Honia Campbell. He's from Teteko. Um, and he asks brilliant questions. Lovely man. You should meet him. Uh, he's great. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to invite our next speaker on, and um, I must say, I must say, the first thing I saw in, in, the, in the bio was of Ngai Tuhoi descent. Now, should I, should I need to continue on with the, uh, with the accolades of this lovely lady, as I am of Ngai Tuhoi descent as well? Um, my oldest children are from uh, Te Atiawa, and um, as you know, in their, their mita, they drop their H's. In our mita of Tuhoi, we also drop our G's. Not much left of the reel from my kids, eh? It's, <laughs> hey, we've got to put a letter back in there, buddy. Eh? <laughs> Something back in there. Um, but uh, it's, it's all right. It's all right. And also, and, being, and I can say this because I am nigh to it, um, we don't, because we don't have Gs, we, we don't wear G-strings. We just wear strings. <laughs> so uh, that's just a, a little bit of a thing from, from us. Into it. Anyway, I will continue. I will continue. That's the, that's the way to laugh. Put some laughter out there, some healing. Laughter is healing. It's okay. You don't have to... <laughs> Let it out, as Māori's doing. Get, get, get physical with it. You know how Māori people are like... <laughs> and you whack your friend and all that sort of stuff. Eh? We all do that. It's lovely. It's healing. It's a time for healing and laughter. Even tears can heal. Kāpai. Hōia I digress. 
of Ngāitū Oi descent and a, is a professor of Indigenous Studies and co-head of the Wānanga o Waipapa School of Māori Studies and Pacific Studies at the University of Auckland. She also delivers education and creative writing programs in prisons. She has also sat on a number of assessment panels as well as been co-chair of the Children's Commissioner's Expert Advisory Group on Solutions to Child Poverty. She was a member of the Welfare Expert Advisory Group at uh, Duepu Hapai Ite Orai. Oranga. Okay, someone had a typo here. <laughs> the Safe and Effective Justice Advisory Group. <laughs> oh, oh, it's all those, um, like uh, KFC, all those shortening of things, eh? eh? CAB, all those, can't play. Her recent, her recent research focused on incarceration, particularly of Māori and Indigenous peoples, gang whānau issues and issues pertaining to poverty, inequality and so social justice. And the biggest accolade of that is that she is of, again, Ngai Tuhoi descent. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite the Chief Science Advisor for the Ministry of Social Development, Professor Tracy McIntosh. Warm Pacific greetings. Uh, Minister Williams, Under Secretary Jan Logie, uh, Kai Fakahari, uh, Debbie Powers, uh, his beautiful uh, Wahine Toa over here, Marama and, and others. I really wish to acknowledge all the expertise, the knowledge and experience in this room and recognise your commitment to service, to our communities, to our whānau and to our futures. Kia ora. So it is my great pleasure to speak at this launch uh, I'm honoured to be uh, in the role of the Chief Science Advisor for the Ministry of Social Development. And in that role, I have a particular interest in evidence. Evidence to inform policy, evidence to inform practices, and evidence to support the well-being of the people that the Ministry serves and that supports the wellness of this nation. The quality of evidence is important. The robustness, the rigour and the variety of evidence is important. The authenticity and legitimacy of the evidence is important. The alignment with lived experience is important. Who designs the questions? Who asks the questions? Who validates the questions? Who analyzes the questions? All of this will shape the evidence. We need to be confident that the evidence that we draw on is robust, ethical, critical, adaptive, and culturally informed. Given the damage and the mamai that violence produces and reproduces in far too many lives in this country, there is a need for profound honesty, what I often call radical honesty, on the causes and drivers of all forms of violence. And there must be confidence that all of us can be agents of change. One of the areas I work in most closely in my research life is working with people who have often suffered terrible social harm, terrible levels of violence in their own lives, and some of them who have gone on to, perp to perpetrate harm, sometimes egregious forms of harm on others. And taking accountability for past actions and imagining a different future, one of the concepts we work with is the sentiment that each of us is more than the worst things we have ever done. Everyone has a part to play in preventing violence, even those, and perhaps particularly those, who have a real familiarity with violence. So when I think about these three frameworks, I am confident that they all build on multiple forms of evidence and experience, all recognise the strength and expertise of communities to inform solutions that not only can prevent violence, but transform Fano and community dynamics. They recognise individuals, Fano and communities 
as being powerful, transformative agents of change. It acknowledges the importance of having kaimahi within and outside of our agencies, supporting and co-determining a flourishing future. By drawing on those with lived experience of family and of whānau violence, those that have been harmed and those that have harmed, we create another level of evidence, another level of rigorous, robust knowledge and expertise that we can draw on. And it is this knowledge that can disrupt international, intergenerational harm and restore mana to all involved to enable mana wahine, mana tane, mana tamariki. The following uh, whakatauki speaks to the intent of the three frameworks. Mā te rongo ka mohio, mā te mohie ka marama, mā te marama ka mātou, mā te mātou ka ora. Through perception comes awareness, through awareness comes understanding, through understanding comes knowledge, through knowledge comes well-being. These frameworks, all evidence informed, seek to restore people and the community and draw on local expertise to inform sustainable, long-term, positive change. At a conference that I attended last year in Tahiti on preventing family violence in the Pacific, we were reminded that creating the conditions of peace is not a passive action, but an ongoing conscious activity. So over this last weekend, I've been doing the final comments on a PhD of one of my very gifted Māori students, Sir Rochelle Menzies, who has done a comprehensive qualitative study on whānau wellness with long form interviews in the hope that the findings will contribute to more effective policy and practice to increase uh, whānau wellness levels for all Māori. And so one of the concepts that emerged from the participants in her study, which is so evident in this work, is the concept of whakapakari. I draw on the work here. Whakapakari recognises the ability of whānau to be strengthened through adversity and make positive changes for collective well-being. It recognises whānau's capacity for resilience, strength, progress, cohesion, positive coping, transmission of knowledge and cultural values, and maturity. Her work, as with these three publications, expressed tragic, triumphant, admirable, relatable experience where whānau overcome adversity, overcome challenges, disadvantage, disagreement, division, loss, stresses over the course of their everyday lives. Participants shared stories about stopping intergenerational violence, strengthening divided whānau through intentional cohesion, and leaving negative influences and lifestyles behind in order to progress whānau to greater happiness, health, and socioeconomic well-being. From this, we can learn the real value that we see here, that Māori, Pacific people, and people from other communities are experts of their own condition. And rather than others tell them what is wrong with them, it is important that they co-determine their futures. All of us have the right and the capacity to correct our own behaviour. And there is a need to understand structural violence as well as interpersonal forms of violence in coming with these solutions. Appropriately resourced and supported, we can meet our whānau aspirations. And in fact, for many, I too hoi included, our future goal would be to achieve flourishing without the need for state intervention. Communities know what they need to improve their lives and whānau envir environments and are capable of formulating their own solutions. These findings strongly suggest that the most effective ways to improve levels of whānau wellness is to ask whānau what they need to be well, what wellness means to them, and to provide and support in terms of those changes. So these publications demonstrate that we have gone beyond merely describing a condition and determining our crisis responses to that condition towards a focus on prevention that is informed by those who are holders of knowledge that lend itself towards new creative possibilities for change that are embedded and enriched by those who are in communities and the communities of practice that are also evident in this room. 
whether it be mission-led in Pacific communities where church and whanau have a significant role, or kaupapa based in Māori communities, or with, men, or with men with lived experience of violence become champions of change. A few years ago, as a part of an independent evaluation of Etu Fano, I did some focus group and, and wānanga. They were some of the most inspiring of my career, and I'm going to finish with their voices. And one of the big issues was that rather than see themselves as gang associated, they say we're gang related. We are Fano. So this was a group of people whose relationship with government agencies had been poor. Their relationships with agents of the state were based on a sense of mistrust and betrayal. They felt that they and their children had been condemned by state authorities. While they had seen uh, how they were able to work together in solidarity and had seen the power of the collective, they were also suffering ongoing mamai by the struggle and the outcomes of their struggle. And this is some of the quotes that they brought. And as I said, you know, this is their knowledge, their expertise. These were experts in their own condition. And they said, talking about their tufano, what it meant coming into their lives. And they came into it very, very cynical. And they said, they were the guide between ourselves and the government. We had not had access to that before. We had just finished a five-year battle with those guys. It was a mean Modi shift to Etufano. We needed that at the time. We needed a shift in our wairua. We were still hurting. Etufano kick-started us off as a, as a rōpū and our individual journeys. Wakaama te reo working in the community, kaitiakitanga for our kaumātua, Kazi's doing our thing. We did not have that before. We did not really think about this till Etu Fano came along. We had a vision, a shared vision. Another said, Etu Fano means stand up Fano, and that means we've had enough of this. I might have deleted a few words in there, <laughs> uh, just because of the broadness uh, of our, our community. We know we come from a great line of chiefs and it is time for us to start living that and believing that. Believing that we are the taonga, having prestige about ourselves. And another one, beautiful sort of piece of, of growing up and recognising how important the mob was in their, in their lives, but also recognising the a breadth of the world they hadn't thought. And she said, and this talking about that early days of, with Air Tufano, I love thinking about the beginning days. It was so exciting, so many ideas. All our fathers were mobsters, and, we were, and that's how we were born. They had already left the Waikato to go to Wellington, the great migration to join the, the mongrel mob. I understand why they joined. It was easier to join the mongrel mob in those days than it was to be Māori. We grew up mongrel mob. We weren't Māori because that was not cool. Though she really talks about how important, and I don't want it really important, the collectivity of her whānau were for her, how important the mob was and, and continues to be for her. Uh, for me, my way of seeing the world as a child was I thought that every Māori man was mongrel mob and that we all lived like that. It was an adventure and it was safe in my household. No Māori, not even a kia ora. There was no Māori, nothing. So this was such an important part of the journey. For me, Tenakwe is only two years old. And now I am so proud of being Māori. I'm proud of who, where I came from, I'm proud of who I was, and I'm proud of who I am. How does it fit with me? I am the water tester. Does it feel all right? If it feels good, I will make everyone do it. Get our voice out there and go as far as we can go with a full puku. So a significant barrier to transformative change remains in the tendency to see change as only occurring through the change of personal choices rather than addressing structural issues. Notwithstanding, if any gains are to be sustained, it will only be when there is recognition that individuals and groups who have experienced violence and are experts of their own condition have a vital role to play in creating those conditions for change. For us as Māori, I would argue that culture matters and it matters deeply. We, however, resist the notion that Māori should have to find cultural solutions to structural problems. Structural problems need structural solutions. But these can be informed by a broad range of knowledge and expertise, including, critically, as we can see here, the expertise of communities. Kia ora tato.
tēnā koe, tēnā koe whanaunga. Um, powerful, powerful kōrero, nā mihi nui ki a koe. Um, it is kōrero that most of us in our communities will know of, will see, will experience and will feel, but to articulate it in such a way that it can be made into a solution-based kōrero is beautiful. So thank you very much. And as a media consultant myself, I do consult media and, and around the place and do do that. If I can just offer a quick service to the likes of uh, Debbie MST and, 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 um, and uh, Tracy as well, just after delivering speeches like that. And then just as a rangatahi thing. I'm not going to do a TikTok, don't worry. <laughs> like you, I'm walking to the supermarket and my daughter's just like, uh, what, are we going to get um, some bread, Dad? No, none of that. But this is what we do. You deliver a speech like that, and with, with, with kōrero, and, and with the guts in it like that, and this is what you do. Don't try it now today, don't, don't do it today. But later on, when you ever do that, it's called the mic drop. Grab the mic, lift it out, both. <laughs> mic drop. That's how it goes. Practice it, people, it works. It wo trust me. You, I don't see a lot of trust in the room. <laughs> I can see you going back to your whānau and going, that's right, whānau, mic drop, buff. It'll work, trust me. Trust me. Hoi ono te whānau, we will carry, <laughs> we will carry on. I'm not going to do a mic drop either because it's not my mic and it's probably about $300. But never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to invite our, our final speaker um, to our launch today. Now, this beautiful lady brings a strong background and considerable experience working in community health and mental health services and residential disability services. She has worked with single parent families, youth services, family violence and refuge. Now, from a first-hand experience, she understands and knows the power of a strength-based approach. A strength-based approach. And that's what we're talking about here today, which, which we all understand and know and can deliver back to our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, please, big round of applause for the Honourable Minister, Puto Williams, Associate Minister for Social Development, Nami Inu Kiakwe. Kia rāna tātou kato, toa i te aroa kora i reka o tetua. Uh, to you, um, kora, thank you for all that you do to set the kawa for the day that allows for the respectful um, conversations that we, we need to have today. So thank you very much for everything you do. To my distinguished colleague, uh, the Under Secretary Jan Logie, thank you for your mahi and thank you for continuing to lead an uh, extraordinary piece of work um, that is about government doing things collaboratively. Who would have thought, right? Um, Debbie Power, an amazing, amazing woman who leads an extraordinary team of people that I'm proud to uh, work with every day. Uh, to um, our other distinguished guests, um, Wally Homaha, I see you in, um, uh, Deputy Commissioner, thank you for being here. Our uh, Race Relations Commissioner, um, Paula Tes Tesorio, our uh, Disability Commissioner, I know you're here. Um, and to my friends and colleagues, thank you for being here. Now, at this point, now, Jean, if you would just close your ears. At this point, I usually um, do my one and only joke. Um, which is, um, my name is Munukua Poto Williams, and I tell people that that means the beautiful black pearl of the Pacific. <laughs> that's what I tell people. <laughs> that is my one and only joke. That's the only joke you're going to get from me today. What I do want to say is that COVID has been a great disruptor. It's been a great opportunity too. But good things take time. But I'm delighted to be here today to launch, but more importantly, to celebrate these three five-year frameworks for change. And when I got asked post-COVID whether we still wanted to have this launch, I said, hell yes. And these documents are significant for a number of reasons, but what's important is actually celebrating each and every one of you. I feel I'm amongst friends, and champions, and that's who you are. Uh, and this is government, this is providers, this is community leaders, this is people who have been in the mahi a long time, and I recognise so many faces out there today. It's 
like being amongst friends and champions. These frameworks represent a huge legacy of effort from many, many people over many, many years. And Dysart is one I want to particularly recognise. Mari Schmidt, too, you're in the audience today, too. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic women who have done the mahi for a, a, a long time. But you're working alongside all of us to create better lives for whānau and families across our country. Community leaders who have stepped up to the challenge to confront and to inspire change. Many, many, many individuals and groups who toil away at the coalface, often quietly and without fuss, to enable and to create hope, dignity and opportunity for some of the most vulnerable New Zealanders. And of course, people from within government who are committed to thinking differently about how government can work effectively alongside communities to support their mahi and create real, lasting and significant change. It's lovely to see you here today. I, what I really value about these frameworks is that they're focused on prevention. And that means taking a holistic and long-term view of the many different factors that shape people's lives, complex lives. It also means understanding that while there are tough issues to be addressed, it's important to recognise the many strengths and assets that already exist in our cultures and our communities, and how government resources can best be utilised to harness, to support and to amplify these. It means understanding what boosts resilience and wellbeing and what helps to protect people from the harm and create meaningful, lasting change. These frameworks are shaped by both community knowledge and by the evidence about these factors. Thank you so much, Tracy, for the work that you have done on, on these pieces of work. Extraordinary. We know that a lot of work is needed to support families in crisis. And this is also a government priority, but investing in prevention is a no-brainer. If we want to stem the tide of harm and heartbreak caused by family violence and stop relying on the we can stop relying on the bottom of the cliff solutions. Now here I want to tell you a little something, and I've been racking my brains as to what I wanted to insert here as an example of um, what this means to me. And um, I think the most important thing that I want to say is my personal belief is that I come from a world where crisis is around us. And I've worked in that world often, and Jan, you know this too, we've worked in refuge and, and we've worked in services where we're dealing with crisis all the time. But my message to you is this, that my personal philosophy is about creating space where we can have those authentic and difficult conversations. And they need to be spaces where our tāne feel safe to talk about the issues that impact them, which means that they, the result of, of these harms to them means that they harm others. And I don't know that, um, uh, that some of the work we're doing currently actually enhances that space. Creating safe spaces for all of us to talk about what challenges us is important, but for Tani in particular, maybe we haven't allowed those voices to come through. The other thing that really drives me is Actually, my, my thoughts about children who are in those spaces where life is hard and where they see what's going on with, with, their, with the people that are charged to love them. And my, my other, the other part of this journey really is about um, helping those, those babies restore a sense of well-being, deal with the, the trauma that they experience. And I think by doing that, we will truly break the cycle of family violence. So, um, in saying that, these frameworks are all different and the differences are important. Together, they have the collective focus of long-term positive change for families across Aotearoa. Best of all, community-led change is central to this work. The evidence is clear that to bring about sustainable behaviour change and build community, stronger communities, we need to create communities can create community solutions. And this approach has helped to create three unique frameworks, and we're celebrating them today. 
each specifically designed to respond to the social and cultural dynamics of those communities of interest that they represent. So firstly, e tu whānau. It's proudly kaupapa Māori. It's grounded in Māori values, concepts and traditions that fortify and uplift whānau Māori. It's already making a positive difference for whānau around the country and it's both encouraging and illuminating to see how this kaupapa has also been embraced by former refugee and migrant communities in Aotearoa. E tu whānau underscores the universal importance of cultural values and constructs to connect with whānau and communities, to build identity and pride, and to inspire change. For example, one of the central ideas in e tu whānau approach is that violence is not traditional. This acknowledges that whānau's dysfunction and violation is not traditional, but rather a direct impact of colonisation. Although warfare and violence occurred in pre-European times, there is a great deal of evidence to suggest that traditional family life was characterised by loving whānau relationships between men, women and children. The next framework is Pacifica Proud. This too recognises the inherent value in culture as a foundation for family strength and transformation. The Pathways for Change framework acknowledges the the diversity within our Pacifica population and the need for ethnic specific approaches. It has created an overarching framework to umbrella this work. It's exciting to see the focus and direction that, is, that this framework has set and in particular mobilising and supporting ca uh, capability development within our Pacific communities and the potential that that holds to ignite real change in our Pacific peoples. It's heartening to see Pacifica Proud's strong focus on family as the rock and the foundation of Pacific people's identity. And indeed, for our Pacific people, family is the safe space where belonging and sacred relationships are nurtured and protected. Violence directly contradicts family well-being and disconnects Pacific people from the values it provides um, anchors to their identity. And this is why it's so important that Pacifica Proud's vision to see Pacific families and communities who are safe, resilient, and enjoy physical and emotional and spiritual well-being. The campaign for action, it's not okay. I just wanted to say it's great to see our beautiful men folk on this document. So thank you so much. It represents a lot of um, what we are wanting to do in the prevention space. But I also wanted to tell you a little bit of a story about It's Not OK. I used to work with a great team of um, women at a uh, refuge called Western Refuge in um, Henderson in, in Auckland. And uh, one of our staff, a lovely Indian woman called Puja, had a parrot called Romeo who she would bring to work every now and then because Romeo actually he got a little bit um, anxious being at home by himself and he used to comfort himself by saying it's okay it's okay it's okay he came to our refuge and we taught him to say it's not okay <laughs> poor Romeo he's a little bit confused by that but it's not okay it's okay it's okay it's not okay anyway it's amazing what you, need, what, what you need to do to get you through the day. The other story I want to tell about that, about that particular refuge is we worked quite a lot with the police um, uh, supporting women coming into our refuge. And I used to joke that there were six women, you know, that our mechanism for supporting women was basically protection orders. And there would be six women holding a piece of paper and that would be our, like our shield uh, against the onslaught. But... It's amazing to see how far we have come in our responses um, and how um, acknowledging pieces of work like this, the prevention work that's been going on for decades in our country actually has shifted the way we work with women. Okay, it's not okay. The Campaign for Action, with its primary campaign, It's Not OK, is well known to all of us, including a recent campaign to provide messaging and support over the COVID-19 lockdown period. Like Etu Fano and Pacifica Proud, the Campaign for Action also has a prevention focus, particularly through community-led responses that encourage and enable men to commit lives without violence. 
launched in 2007, its Not OK campaign was world leading at the time in its use of mass media and uh, men who had previously used violence. And it's still going strong with two out of three people in a recent survey saying they took action against family violence in some way as a result of the advertising. This new framework details how the campaign will continue to be a world leader through new and innovative ways of working to support behavioural change in men. For example, while one of the campaign's strengths has also been its work with real people, such as uh, the users of violence, such as Victamati, Phil Paikia and Jeremy Eparaima, who you may know from the TV ads. The campaign is now also working alongside influencers like Matt Brown from My Father's Barber, whose work brings a new dimension to the prevention approach by providing a safe space for men undertaking the simple act of getting a haircut, allowing them to tell their stories, take off their masks and reach out for help. Work during COVID-19 response and recovery has reinforced that community par partnerships are crucial and essential. Because of the relationships that have built up over many years through initiatives like these and during lockdown, MSD was able to swiftly connect with community networks and ensure that vulnerable families were supported in ways uh, that responded to their immediate and particular needs. Thank you, Debbie, for all that you and your team have, have did during that time. As we navigate our way through the ongoing challenges of COVID-19, the work that is represented within these, the pages of these frameworks will never be more important. It will support some of the most vulnerable families and communities to build strength and resilience as they face the impacts of COVID-19. It will make a con crucial contribution to the government's response and recovery. This prevention work is also a valuable contribution to the government's cross-agency joint venture and the development of a national strategy for the elimination of family and sexual violence headed by the um, Undersecretary Jan Logie. Through these three initiatives, MSD leads the design, development and implementation of community-led prevention work stream. And before I close, I would like to thank you all for your patience. These frameworks have been ready for some time and much of the work is already underway. But unfortunately, as I said before, some of the delays getting to this point included uh, most recently the advent of COVID-19 and the subsequent lockdown. But I felt strongly that we must celebrate the work and the positive impact that it will have on all of our lives. And before I launch this particular, uh, before I launch the frameworks, what I do want to say is that each and every one of you demonstrate how positive um, we can all be for um, um, going forward. The, the relationships that are in this room, it's extraordinary. It was extraordinary to, to meet and greet a few of you out there and then come into this space and know that you are friends and colleagues who value each other's work who honour and acknowledge um, all that, that you have done and you do it collectively and you celebrate collectively. Um, and may we, through the launch of these PO, may they be the marker of a safer, positive and violence-free lives in Aotearoa. And I would like to now um, have the great pleasure of declaring these frameworks launched. And I congratulate all of you who participated on the journey that has led us here today. Nō reira e hoa mā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā tātou katoa. Tēnā koe, Minister Williams. Um, and congratulations on the launch to everyone here and everyone that um, put work in there um, behind these, fr these frameworks. I'd just like to say and also acknowledge Fire and Dice Heart um, for her hard work and such a strong, strong lady. Um, so strong, indeed, that when um, I was approached to MC this event, she says to me, thank you for volunteering. Um, <laughs> I didn't know I was volunteering, but not a problem. Um, but Nga Mihi Nui Kia Kwe Whaia, um, and we all love and respect you more than you might know. So kia ora Nga Mihi, and to all those you support and, and who works with you, Nga Mihi Nui Kia Koutou Katoa. Um, 
If I can just take a moment now and just address um, Debbie and the team at MSD, um, Minister Williams and everyone involved from what was said today, um, I can guarantee you on behalf of the people that are here um, to say that if you will fight tooth and nail to support and keep them safe, then no doubt that they will fight to support and keep our whānau safe as well. So with that, thank you very much for your launch. Thank you very much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before we leave, there's uh, copies of the frameworks to the back there. There's going to be an unveil uh, where those people are hiding in the corner there. And uh, they'll, they'll pull off the little, the little uh, there's a, a towel over the top of that or something like that, a sheet there. <laughs> Ta-na! There you go. Ta-na! It's data. Everything's data these days, eh? Ta-da! We've got frameworks. So you're more than welcome to go and pick up some of those books and have a bit of a read. Now, I know some of the information that you've heard today from our, from our valuable speakers is going to take time to sort of... Um, you know, sink in there, and please feel free to talk to and network with one another and talk to our, our distinguished speakers and the people here and get some real networks going and try to understand what's going on. Don't forget a bucket of water starts with a drop and we've already started that bucket, so continue on at the far note. Um, before we finish off, thank you very much for being here today for the launch of these three streams and um, would hope to see you when I volunteer to MC the next event, a <laughs> fire. I'm sure I will be volunteering for anything. Um, I'd like to just invite Takutua Kana Kura to fuck a copy. Then I Kura. Kia ora, Toto. Um, following the karakia, can we get a song going so, you know, Pakamana te kaupapa nei? But I just want to endorse the, the minister in launching and launching these PO, and that for me, I'm going to do a karakia, which is asking each and every one of you to grab your hoi, and these are the hoi that are going to move us forward. And it talks about hold on to your hoi, get your hoi ready as we move forward into this, into this new challenge ahead of us. Then following the karakia, I'm going to hand it over to our entertainer, and uh, then we'll move on. Piri papa te hoi, ahui papa te hoi, tohi tū te hoi, tohi rere te hoi, tohi māhuta te hoi, tohi kapa kapa te hoi. Ko te hoi nā wai, ko te hoi nā te kau nu nui, ko te hoi nā wai, ko te hoi nā te kau roro, ko te hoi nā wai, ko te hoi nā rangi nui e tu ake nei. Te nā te waka katau ki te pōtarang, ki tāwi tōtarang, ngā tūranga watu o. O matariki, ki te au mārama nei, e rongo whakairi he kirunga, turuturu a uti, waka maua ki a tīnā, huie. Thank you, Maestro. Tato tato we, tu ti ra ngai ngai we. Tato tato e, ai a te mara matanga me te aroha. Kia tapu tahi kia kotahira. Ta 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 we, tu ti ra mai ngai we. Ta 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 we, tu ti ra mai ngai we. Ta 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 e, ai a te mara matanga me te aroha. Tahi kia ko tahi ra ta 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 e ta 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 e. Kia ora, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great afternoon. Kia ora.